Well, folks, this is sort of a, <clears throat> a postscript to making this video. Uh, first off, I want to give a big shout out to B underscore E S S E link. When I ran across the problem of when I got back after letting my shoulder heal for four months, the loader had no fire. I had no clue how to get the front PTO clutch off, so I <clears throat> posted the question on our forum, and within an hour or two, I got an answer back from this gentleman or lady, I don't know which. Uh, big shout out, thanks. I happen to have a bolt the right size. It came off, I was able to get the, the tin off the front of the motor, get the new pickup mounted on it, get everything put back together, and that's <clears throat> one of the greatest assets uh, us Power King tractor loaders have is this forum, and members' willingness to share information. You know, every now and again I'll see a new post, you know, hi guys, I'm new to this, just bought my first tractor, don't know anything about it. Well, I think we were all there at one time. And one of the things I'd really like to see the four members do is to post videos. I can think of a couple of things. Uh, one of our members, Russ, Larry, could be somebody else, has a method of repairing the shift forks. When they get worn out on the tips, wells them up and grinds them back. Man, that would make a great instructional video for the rest of us. I've never been in the transmission. I've got two of them. It's got dual transmission. I haven't got a better problem with either one of them. And like I said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I've had no reason to go into it. But I suspect one day I'm going to have to do that same repair to the forks. It sure would be great to have a video. I'd like to see another video maybe where somebody, and this could, you know, it could be a two hour video, does a complete tear down overhaul of a transmission. Uh, I've never been into it. There are a lot of subtleties in the repairs that I have read on the forum, you know, about, well, this, you know, that goes in this, goes in the back end, and this goes in the front end, and certain different, oh, well, this is a little bit different model transmission, you need this part, you know. That's great information, and there's nothing like a watching it. Uh, and I, when I made this video, I tried to make it like you were with me in the shop, watching things going on, and as I said at the outset, I did not show any machine, and this thing was long, well, turned out to be longer than I thought. Uh, man, if I had put the machine in there, this thing would have probably been over two hours long because I have a lot of machining work that went into making the parts to make this thing. Uh, you don't have to have a video camera to make a video of working on a tractor or working on whatever. Uh, there's a fellow, his channel I subscribe to, it's called Brandon's Garage, B-R-A-N-D-O-N, apostrophe S, garage, like garage where you park the car. This guy works on outboards, another passion of mine. All of his videos are made with a cell phone. Just a plain old smartphone, and I'm sure most all of you have got one. If you got one, it'll take video. He does all of his YouTube videos with a cell phone. You can do the same. You don't have to go invest in a whole lot of money. I just thought I'd take a minute and show you the, the finished installation. We've got our new pins in. And, and if you're like me, you probably got a shelf full of pieces of rattle cans of paint. And I just took some coarse sand paper and kind of polished off everything and put some paint. You can't see it, but I've got the, the caps welded back on the bottom end of the loader arms. Uh, they came off ugly, they went back on ugly. 
I could have spent hours welding over some of their old well beads and, you know, grinding it off, making it real pretty, but it just wasn't worth it. Uh, it took a lot of the slack out of it, but I'm going to show you where the remaining slack is. Now, if you notice, look at the coating of hydraulic oil right here. And eh, you probably can't see it, but it's dripping out of the end of the bucket. The rod gland seals are worn out on just about every cylinder on this loader. And what I want you to pay attention to is the movement here and the movement up here. When I tilt the bucket back and forth, you can see just how worn out those pivot points are. Now I noticed in one of the videos that the cylinders, the, the bucket tilt cylinders, were on air. Uh, that's because of this leak, these leaks. I go through about two gallons of hydraulic oil a year. This thing just bleeds. So that's why I'm going to be replacing all the cylinders on here. I could rebuild them, but the rods are so badly pitted. I'm not going to show you, but they got rust pits all the way through the chrome in a lot of places. And that's what tore up the rod gland seals. I think by the, I could buy new shafts. I can buy seal kits for them, but by the time I go through all that, I might as well just buy new cylinders and save me all the work and trouble. The problem I'm having is that, and I'm not sure how good you're going, but the spread here and the spread up here between the mounting points for the cylinders is two inches. Everything else I can find is two and a half inches. Now that's not going to be a problem down on this end. I can machine a quarter inch off of each side of the trunnion. But when it comes up here, everything I've ever seen for sale has got a clevis in. Well, the clevis is probably not going to be much more than a quarter inch thick. And it's two and a half. Well, by the time I mill that off, I've got nothing left to mount it. So I'm still looking. And... Uh, I may come up with a way to make a two and a half inch wide clevis in, convert it over to a trunnion in, like the rod in, to fit a two and a half inch spacing between the mounting clips. Okay folks, that repair is finished. The next repair I'll be videoing is when I get the new hydraulic cylinders and do whatever I got to do to get them mounted on the loader because as you saw uh, in the video where I showed you the, the actual finished product where I painted the ends of the loader arms and the bucket ears, where I done welding and heating and straightening and soldering and everything else. Uh, you saw how they were leaking. They all leak. The, uh, the piston rods are so corroded, uh, deep pits in them, probably from ex years of exposure to manure, being out in the weather. Uh, and yeah, as I said, you know, I can, I can order chrome rod stock. I can make new rods for it. I can buy seal kits for it. I don't know what the condition of the inside of the tubes are if the inside of the tubes are pitted, scored. Is the piston scored up, torn up? Uh, it just makes sense at this stage of the game with a 1974 machine who bleeds two gallons a year of hydraulic oil just to put new cylinders on it and be done with it. It would be a lot of work to overhaul those cylinders. I know I've got one that has a leak in a weld, where what they call a, the half coupling. That's a, that little coupling that sticks down, 3 8 pipe that you screw your hose in. I've got one that's leaking in the weld. I already had it repaired once 
we cut it off, and I had a professional welder weld a brand new one back on, and it's leaking again. I suspect it may be through all corrosion on the cylinder. I don't know. But it sits there and drips all over the floor. So the next video is going to be installing new hydraulic cylinders on there. For those of you who persevered through all of this, thanks. I welcome your comments. Uh, if you go up to the top where it says Rod Cox, you can click on it. And over at the right is, I think it says about. It has my email address if you want to email me directly. Uh, feel free to do so. Anyway, I appreciate you all watching, and I appreciate any comments, thumbs up, thumbs down. I'd love to know what you think of it. Thank you all.